Today, I'm going to be showing you how to make and rig your own PNG tuber from start to finish with PNG Tuber Plus. This includes making and importing the art, as well as adding physics and animations. All you need to get started is an art program that allows you to save transparent PNG images and, of course, PNG Tuber Plus. I've had a few requests for this guide, so let's get started. First, you want to design your model in your favourite art program. I use Clip Studio Paint. I do a sketch of the character on a single layer just to get an idea of what I want them to look like. For PNG Tuber Plus models, the recommended canvas size is 750 by 750 pixels, but I like to go a little bigger. You also want to leave some room around your character and draw a little more of the body than you want to show on screen. This is so that when the model is fully rigged, it's not just a floating torso. When you've designed your character, you want to separate them into different parts, similar to making a VTuber model. Every part that you want to move should be on its own layer. You need to draw the entire part, even if it won't be visible behind other parts. You should also make sure those parts are filled in too. If you don't, your model will look broken when rigged as when the parts move, the unfilled areas will be visible. It doesn't have to be neat or anything. Look at my body layer, for example. You should also draw at least two separate sets of mouths and eyes. One layer with your character's eyes open and another with them closed. This is so your character can blink. Then the same with the mouths. One open and one closed so your character can talk. When you've finished drawing your model and every part is on its own layer, you can start exporting them as PNG image files. You want to save each layer as its own image, so I suggest making a folder to put them all in. You can hide all of your layers and then go through each one, show it, save it, and then hide it again and move on to the next one. Also when naming your layers, just make sure it's something that tells you what it is. It's a little tedious, but it is what it is. Now that you've made your model, it's time to open PNG Tuber Plus so we can bring it to life. Before we get into it, please note that I'll be using the following terms to refer to certain things throughout the rest of this video. I'll be calling the individual art layers that we made sprites, as that's what PNG Tuber Plus calls them. Layers are what I'll be using to refer to your image order. It works just like in your art program where layers placed above others will show on top of them. However, in PNG Tuber Plus, you can have more than one sprite on the same layer. Now that's out of the way, it's time to start rigging our model. When you open PNG Tuber Plus, it probably won't look like this, but don't worry. First, click anywhere on the screen to open up the program's UI and look for the microphone icon. Select the mic you want to use from the list, but make sure it's the same one you use when streaming or recording so your model reacts correctly when speaking. You can also adjust your mic sensitivity by changing these sliders. The top one is how long your character's mouth stays open after you finish speaking, and the bottom one is the noise level required to open your character's mouth to speak. If you have a lot of background noise, you might want to move this bar more to the left. It's important to have your microphone on when rigging so you can test your model's physics and make adjustments if needed since most of your model's movement only happens when speaking. You can also change the background colour by clicking on the cogwheel icon and then selecting one of the coloured squares. This end square allows you to pick a custom colour. I like to use green screen and then add a chroma key effect in my editing software for adding custom backgrounds later, but if you want a transparent background, you can select this checkerboard square here. I use this one when streaming. The other settings I'll cover later, so just click on the pencil icon in the corner here to go into edit mode. To remove the model on screen, select the body layer and then click the delete icon in the side window here. And now your workspace should be nice and empty. Next, we want to copy and paste our image files into the PNG Tuber Plus folder. So to do that, hit the escape key on your keyboard and it'll open the file directory. Then copy your sprite images folder and paste it into here. You can close this window after you're done. Now look for the add new sprite button here in the top. Look for the folder you just added and then import all of your sprites. You can only add one at a time though, which is annoying, and they'll all be out of order. But don't panic, we can fix that. Just import all of your sprites first. When everything's been imported, we can rearrange the layers by clicking on them, and then pressing Q to move it back by one, and E to move it forward by one. You can find out what layer your sprite is on by looking at this number here. Go through your model and rearrange the layers until it looks like it did in your art program. When you've finished, it's time to link your sprites together. This is so when we add in the physics, everything moves together correctly and your sprites don't fly all over the place. You want to link your sprites in a specific way. All of the sprites related to the body, such as clothing, accessories, or any arms and wings your model may have, should be linked to the main body layer. And all of the sprites related to the head should be linked to the main head layer, or face in this example. To link two sprites together, select the sprite you want to link, and then look for the chain icon at the top here. There should now be a line connected to your mouse cursor. Now, just click on the layer you want to connect it to. 
So in this case, I'm linking the cloak to the body. And there you go. You can check what sprites are linked in the sprite list here. If you accidentally link the wrong sprites together, don't worry. Just select the sprite and click the chain icon again. Then click the correct sprite to link it to. Go through your model and make sure all the sprites are linked to the correct base sprite. When you've finished, you should have two separate groups, the body and head. Then you want to click on the base head sprite and link it to the base body sprite. Now everything should be all linked up correctly. With all the prep work done, we can finally get your model moving. First, let's start with talking and blinking. Select your closed mouth sprite, and then in the side window here, look for the two boxes with crosses in them. You want to click on the first box until the icon changes to a closed mouth picture. This makes your closed mouth sprite only visible when there's no sound coming from your microphone. Then, you want to select your open mouth sprite and change the box to an open mouth icon. Now when you talk, your model will talk too. It's pretty much the same to make your model blink, only you want to change the icons on the second box instead. Your closed eye sprite should be set to the closed eye icon, and your open eye sprite should be set to the open eye icon. Simple. Next, we can make our model nice and bouncy. Click on the sprite you want to add bounce to and look for the squash slider. Play around with it to find something you like. The squash effect is only really noticeable when your model moves, so remember to talk into your mic to see what it looks like and make adjustments. You can add squash to as many sprites as you like, so take some time to think about what sprites you'd like to add the effect to. Sometimes, you might want to have sprites move around independently or make your model breathe or float around the screen. To do this, select the sprite you want to move around and look for the X and Y frequency and amplitude sliders. X moves the sprite horizontally and Y moves it vertically. Amplitude is the range of movement and frequency is how fast it will move. The higher you set these sliders, the more extreme the animation, so play around with these and find something that looks good to you. Next, let's add some rotation and swinging animations to some of our sprites. First, we want to change the origin point of any sprite we want to add a rotation effect to. To do this, select the sprite you wish to rotate and look for the green and red crosshair on screen. This is the origin point of that sprite. To move it, hold the O key on your keyboard and then use the WASD keys to move it around. Place the origin point of the sprite where you want to rotate it. So in this case, I want this piece of hair to swing, so I'll move the origin point to the top here. If you accidentally move the sprite without holding the O key, you can fix it by using the WASD keys to move it back into place. To make your sprite rotate, look for the rotational drag slider and adjust it to your liking. Moving the slider into the positives makes it rotate clockwise, while moving it into the negatives makes it rotate anti-clockwise. You can also limit the range that a sprite can rotate by scrolling down to the rotational limit sliders. The circle is a visual diagram of the rotation range, but you can also just talk into your mic instead if you prefer to see the rotation movement on the model itself. Adjust the sliders to change the range your sprite can rotate and find something that looks good to you. So now that you've finished rigging your model, you want to save it. Simply click on the floppy disk icon at the top here, name your model anything you like, and then hit save. PNG Tuber Plus doesn't have an undo function or autosave, so make sure to save your model every time you change something especially since it likes to crash sometimes. Now, click the X icon at the top corner to leave edit mode and go back to life mode. We're gonna take a look at the rest of the settings, so click on the cog wheel to bring up the settings menu. First, let's take a look at the bounce sliders. Bounce force is how high your model jumps when speaking, and bounce gravity is how floaty they are. If you set this really low, they'll barely move, but if you set them too high, they start floating away. Talk into your mic as you make adjustments so you can find a setting that you like. Next, you can adjust the blink settings with blink chance and blink speed. Blink chance is how often your model blinks, and blink speed is how fast your character blinks. Finally, you want to enable texture filtering to make your model look crisp and high quality. Sometimes when you enable this, some of your sprites get these ugly pixel seams on them, making the layers visible when you don't want them to. To fix this, open the individual sprite layer in your art program. Use the lasso tool to select just the edge of it, and then blur it. Save it and then go back into PNG Tuber Plus. Replace the bad sprite with the fixed one by clicking the pencil to go into edit mode, click replace sprite, and then find the sprite you just fixed. And there you go, that ugly pixel scene should be gone. You can add animations to your model with sprite sheets. I like to use them to make better talking animations. To make a sprite sheet, go into your art program and draw each frame separately. In this example, I've drawn a few different mouth shapes. Then save each layer just like you did with the rest of your model sprites. Next, you want to go to this free Sprite Sheet Packer website. 
I have a link to it in the description. Click clear and then add in your sprites. They should be horizontal like this, but if not, just copy the settings on my screen. Press save as PNG. Now go back to PNG Tuber Plus and put your sprite sheet into the folder that has all of your sprites in. Import it and link it just like you did with your other sprites. Now select your sprite sheet layer and look for the sprite frame slider. You want to change this value to the total number of sprites on your sprite sheet. So in this case, I have four mouth images. Then change the animation speed slider to your liking. This changes how fast your animation will play. Since this is my talking mouth sprite, I'll delete the open mouth sprite I had before and change the sprite sheet to only be visible when speaking. And there we go. You can use sprite sheets to animate pretty much anything. PNG Tuber Plus also has a feature that lets you switch costumes or expressions. All you need to do is scroll right down to the numbers at the bottom of the sidebar. Each number represents a state, or toggle. Clicking a number will either hide or show the sprite on that toggle. You can change what toggles each sprite is visible on, allowing you to change your model's look or expression easily. You can also set these toggles to different keybinds by going into the settings and changing them in this section here. I recommend using buttons that you can access easily, but aren't going to press by accident. Checking the costume bounce box makes the bouncing animation play when changing toggles. And that's pretty much everything you need to know about PNG Tuber Plus. I hope you found this video useful, and I wish you luck on your PNG Tuber journey. If you like the model I used in this guide, you can download it for free from my coffee store along with some other PNG Tuber models I've made in the past. But that's it for now. Take care, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you again soon. Bye!